Hi, I'm Heather reporting for Kids First, and today I have the pleasure of speaking to Courtney Gaines. He Hi. is best known for his roles in Children of the Corn and Can't Buy Me Love. Now, let's talk to him about his newest film, Queen Bees. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. So, you have a really large resume of films. What is something that you have learned that from your experience that you were able to use in your newest film? Oh, that's an interesting question. No one's asked that yet. Um, I think, honestly, every project is different. And I think you have to you have to kind of come in with an open mind and see how it's going and then use whatever training you've had, the toolbox of training you've had over the years to apply to be successful. So I try to, I, I think every project's different and that's what sort of makes it fun after doing it for as many years as I have. It's, it's never the same old routine. That's, that's awesome. And speaking of your toolbox, you have been in Back to the Future. And in Queen Bees, Christopher Lloyd is also in it and from Back to the Future. So were you guys able to bond over your experience? Can't say that I was. In both movies, we never had any scenes together, unfortunately. I only have a small cameo in Queen Bees, but I couldn't pass it up because I got the chance to work with Ellen Bernstein, Anne Margaret, Jane Curtin, and Loretta Devine all iconic actresses in their own right. So to get a chance to work with all four of them at once, I could not say no. That is absolutely incredible. And were you able to learn anything from them and just watch them act? I, well, I did have the opportunity to watch them because in the, in the scene, I'm watching them in this cafe waiting for an opportunity to steal Ellen Bernstein's purse. And that's when they, get, get, they catch me and that's how they sort of bond by taking me on. Um, but so the first half of the day, I really did get to watch them work. They had a, they had a dialogue scene before that while I was watching, and it was great to watch all of them and their different styles and techniques. They're all masters in their own right. But you know, like Ellen Bernstein comes from you know actor the actor studio in New York, you know method acting. So I'd watch her do her thing. But someone like Jane Curtin, you know, from Saturday Night Live, just her comic timing is just impeccable. You know, they say the kind of comic timing you can't teach. You know, so it was really great to get to watch all of them in their different styles, but how they all work together. So it was, it was a very good experience. That is so cool. And this is actually something that we don't really see often, like elderly women just being like super cool and modern. It kind of reminds <laughs> me of like the Golden Girls. So what very is- Very much so. Yeah, like, is there something that you took away from the film that just kind of stays with you? Well, I like, I like that, you know, it was an interesting subject overall. Um, the, the, pro the producer writer, he came up with the idea because his, his own grandmother had gone to a home and what he was surprised to find out is it was like high school all over again, you know, the clicks, <laughs> the cool crowds, the, and so he thought that was really surprising and funny. And so he thought he, he would, uh, you know, would elaborate on that and, and sort of bring that to the light, which is a scary thought. High school is not my favorite time. I don't think I'd want to go back as an old person. <laughs> I don't think so either. I just started <laughs> high school and it's already hard enough as it is. So, uh, how was the audition process for this? How was it presented to you? So um, I had I had a good inside track on this one. Um, the director, Michael Lembeck, his father had a class called the Harvey Lembeck Comedy Workshop in L.A. His father has since deceased, but it had, a, it had a wonderful acting career and then taught many, many great actors, like people like Robin Williams and John Larroquette came through that workshop. Um, and uh, so I took that class for a few years. His sister Helene teaches it, and Michael teaches it when he's not directing a movie or directing a TV show. So when I heard it was going on, I, I you know, I said, hey, anything in there that I might be able to do? And he said, I got this small thing, but it's going to be an amazing cast. And I was like, I'm in. So I had, I had to technically audition. I had to go down there and sort of show things to so the other producers could see, but I had a good inside track on that one. Oh, that's cool. And, and it's so funny because you were saying how uh, these ladies are living through high school all over again, which is so funny. So do you have any funny stories from the set? Um, well, the first thing that was really, I mean, again, I, I had a small role, so I wasn't there that long, but uh, the first cool thing was when I got introduced to all of them through Michael, Jane Curtin was like, I know you, I've, you've been in everything. And it was so great to have someone as great as Jane Curtin saying like, I know your work, you know, and that, that just made it, you know, made it so much easier and nicer to, you know, you just never know the first day on a set how it's going to go, depending on how the other actors, you know, feel about you or don't feel about you. So she just really made me feel welcome. Um, so that was really the, the highlight for me, honestly, because I was a big Jane Curtin fan. So 
uh, so that was that was great. That is so cool. And do you actually stay in touch with the actors from the film and the producers? I, I haven't. I mean, I wasn't there that long. I wasn't like, hey, give me your number. Let's give me, I'll text you. So no, I haven't stayed in touch with any of them, though I have stayed in touch with Michael, of course, because, you know, having taken those classes for a few years, I got to know him a bit. That, that's so cool. Like I would, I would be on set like fangirling and just getting all their autographs. And then just <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe you. I was fangying, but I, you know, I had to be a professional, you know? Right. <laughs> and is there anything that you want fans when they see this movie to take away from the film that it stays with them for like the rest of their lives? Well, I think that even though the movie is essentially a comedy, it does get into the, the, the you know, the, the, it gets into the more serious waters about what it's like to grow old and, and to have to leave your home and things like that, that people don't really, don't really think about, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, it's, we all go through various transitions in our life. And even when we get older, we have transitions in our life. And I think it really actually touches on that in a really good way that gives people some food for thought. Right. And the film has actually released. So how have you been impacted seeing the reaction from the fans? The response has been really good. People have said that, uh, how much they liked the film. And in fact, how, what I was just saying, how they were surprised expecting it to be a comedy that it actually took a deeper cut than that. But, but it was, they felt that was a good thing. So the response has been very good. And I was surprised, to be honest, because my part was so small that I even made the trailer. But it's, it's kind of a funny moment because, you know, I get, I, get, I get taken out by Loretta Devine. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and like I said, I guess it's a moment where the girls really bond. And so I guess it's a, even though you do a small part, it can be a very pivotal moment in a movie. Giving, talking about uh, uh, Back to the Future is an example. It's a small, it's not a big part, but if 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 uh, Crispin Glover's character doesn't knock me out of the way and, and kiss her, they don't have a family, right? So it's a memorable part, even though it's a small part. So if you can have a small part in a pivotal moment, people will always remember it. Everything is significant, especially in films. Just one thing can just change the whole course of the film. That is now, true. we live in a modern age where everything gets remade and we have sequels. Yes. So. If the queen bees come back for a second time, <laughs> would you be in the film? I think it'd be hilarious if I was somehow. That would really be funny because I know people would remember me because of what happens to me. That would be, that would be really funny if somehow I popped back in. I would gladly do it. That's for sure. Um, speaking of sequels, uh, you know, obviously Children of the Corn has been, there's been like eight sequels, but there's a pre, not that I'm in it, but there's a prequel coming out sometime this year. It has some very big producers involved, so I think it might be a very good Children of the Corn, uh, as opposed to some of the other ones. Um, I'm not sure when it's coming out, but my guess is September, October. That is so cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, you've been around so long, they start doing prequels, you know, not even sequels. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I guess, to a point, it's like, let's, let's go back. Mm -hmm. that, that's cool, though. I'll, I'll write it down in my, in my calendar. Maybe Excellent. I get to interview you for it as, like, yes. like maybe... Yeah. Sure. Maybe Counting you're back to it, I thought of it. Because I, I, I will check this one out. It has my curiosity. They shot it during the pandemic in Australia, which is also interesting, I think. Oh, that's cool. So it's, it's a horror film with actual horror. <laughs> yeah, during a crazy time in our history. A bunch of kids doing a pan and shooting a movie during a pandemic. That was pretty unusual. Yeah, kudos to them. And actually, speaking of the pandemic, how have you been able to audition for projects now with this whole thing well on. doing exactly what we're doing right now right zooms or what they call self-tapes you shoot it on your camera you uh you send it in and and so yeah the the, the going in for auditions has drastically changed but in some ways it's good if you if say like i'm i have a place in the southeast so i'm doing the atlanta market but i also do stuff in la i don't necessarily have to fly back to la for an audition i can just send in a self-tape or same thing when i'm in la i can just send a self tape to the Southeast Atlanta market. So I, I, I like it better. You also can do, if you don't like the take you did, you can do it again, just like you're doing a movie versus when you come into an audition, there's a lot of pressure to get it right the first time. And that, that puts a lot of pressure on you. So I like, I like being able to film my, film my takes and pick the one I like and send that in much better. Oh, it's so awesome. And then you have like time to just prepare yourself mentally. But let's hope that the next time when Queen Bee's two rolls around, <laughs> you can just go in and audition in person. Now, hopefully it'll just give me the job, right? Since I was already in it, right? That would be good. Yeah, it's just like, come on back, come on back. And then, <laughs> and then this time you can get autographs from everybody. There you go. Okay.
I'll do Thank it. you so much, Courtney, for talking with me. I've had like an awesome time. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You take care. You too. Queen Bees is available in theaters now. I'm Heather reporting for Kids First. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get all of our newest reviews. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Did we sleep together? Oh, don't look so worried. That kind of experience is not on my bucket list.